Hi guys, so I'm going to show you now, this is uh, part, uh, I think it's about part 1, 2, 3, 4, I think it's part 5 here, of our how to count it through my head. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to, uh, we talked about organizing, naming your scenes and items. We're going to talk a little bit about adding some more hyper detail, and as well as modulating asset pieces. Because pretty much the rule in 3D, if you're not going to see it, you don't have to make all the detail for it. Because that means it has to be rendered. You can save you some, some memory space if it's a big file. And in this case, um, you know, I'm only going to have this open shot right about here is where the hyper detail for this guy. And the rest of the pieces I'm going to modulate. So right here you can see I have some nice hyper detail. And I'll show you how to actually set that up. So what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead. Oh, control Z. I don't want to uh, extrude that guy. Let's go make a square real quick. And we have interactive uh, creation on. I'll make it relatively square for now. If it's a little bit off, I can always move it a little bit. So I'll grab one face. And I can actually, we'll change it after the fact. If you try to translate before you divide up your stuff in uh, the history, you can run into a little bit of problems. Maya does have issues for it. So in the height, we're going to make this guy six. That's fine. And then after you decide how many divisions you want, then you can actually move some of the pieces that you need. Let me go to eight in this case. We'll do eight. With the eight set in, I'll go ahead and grab these pieces here. Hit the W key to move this piece in. Rotate. And then from here, what I'll do is I'm going to grab every single face on here on the sides and what you can do to speed it up you can click until you pass out but that's not the most efficient so what I can do is just grab everything here minus maybe the bottom don't really need it or the top and all I did was when I extruded I went in here and turned off keep faces together which you saw me do this earlier before hit extrude and I'm just gonna click on one of the squares and this allows me <coughs> excuse me to pull this out and I can scale it in just a little bit. And that's pretty much how I built that simple shape there to be able to actually pipe shove this guy. And now I can use him over and over again. I can delete whatever faces I need to delete. And I can even scale this down a little bit more if I wanted or scale it in a little bit to get a little bit of that hyper detail, kind of what I'm going for. Remember, as you model, make sure you delete by type history. In this case, I'll do all. I'm not using deformers just yet, but I will show you how to use deformers. Well, that's a quick way to do this. Now, if you need this to be arced a certain way, to have some really cool detail, I keep my finger on the J key. One of the things you want to do when you model, and uh, we may talk a little bit about it in class, is you do want to unwrap items ahead of time before you start adding these deformers. But if you're not, maybe you're working for a movie studio and someone else is handling it, and you've negotiated with them by getting them lots of Mountain Dew. And uh, they're not going to stab you or punch you in the stomach because they have to unwrap your model what you can do is go in here and add a deformer while you're modeling to get that unique shape that you want so you don't have to pull your hair out so we're going to create deformers in this case we'll go to nonlinear nonlinear is pretty nice because right in here we can use a bend deformer the bend deformers are pretty slick let me show you what they do with that curvature set I can make an arc which would normally take forever to do but now this arc is really nice and it's evenly divided up because I have this arc set and by default it kind of goes in the middle of our shape and we are rocking and ready to go and you can also rotate your arc because it does come in out of this lateral position so if you don't like that position you just keep your finger on the J key after the fact or later on and you can get kind of weird funky shapes if you want it's all up to you we'll keep it at the 90 degree there um, and you'll see we have a nice uh, shape and I could use that. That could be the front of a theater. Pretty cool. And when you're done, you just hit Control D, duplicate it, keep my finger on the, uh, hit the W key, and you can pull this guy out here. Pretty slick, huh? So you can actually have a whole bunch of these. If you wanted, we'll go in here and do Control D, or actually delete this guy. If you delete it, it'll go back to its normal shape. Control D. I can move this guy over a little bit. If you wanted, you can even try adding a deformer to multiple shapes. And remember, you make sure that you uh, have everything named. It's kind of important. Keep my finger on the space bar, create deformers. We're going to go in here and do the nonlinear again. 
And again, we'll do uh, bend. And it'll actually bend both of these guys, which is kind of cool. So you can actually have a whole system all set up. This is great for making tires also, even tracks. You can do this. This is the coil cooling system for the space modulator. It can be all sorts of cool stuff. And when you're done, you just grab them and do Control D, duplicate it, pull it up, and there you have this guy. And if you don't want to lose that initial shape, again, just hit Delete, and you have your back to these guys. So you pretty much like have a modeling assembly line as you start building stuff, which is kind of nice. And a lot of people don't are not aware of deformers, but deformers are freaking brilliant. And let me show you why they are brilliant. Let me delete this guy. He was one that I used for lecture. And we'll go to this guy, which is a lot cleaner. So we got this guy here. So say I want to be able to tweak both these out without having to adjust them back and forth. Let me show you how awesome this is. I'm going to keep my finger on the space bar. I'm going to go to Create Deformers. I'm going to use a lattice. I showed this to one of my uh, fellow instructors recently, and they were like, that's cool. Because a lot of people aren't aware, especially those who are uh, max-oriented. I've used both, but I know the power of... of um, what Maya can do and Max can do, and sometimes I grumble like, oh god, that Max has that tool and it totally works. And then sometimes I'm in Max and I'm all, oh man, that tool sucks in Max still. So you, everyone will to each his own. So you'll see I can stretch this out. And the nice thing about this, this is the power of the lattice and why it's nice. It has a nice even drop off between points. I mean, it's not perfect. It is based on how much geo you have. But I can squish this guy and you could probably do it normally but the nice thing about this is you can actually get a nice type of warp shape and notice we have both pieces stuck together which is pretty cool so I can grab this and control D now normally if you did this with vertices you can run the risk sometimes of splitting it apart if you're not careful and not grabbing the points because there are two different objects and uh, you could grab points on one and points on the other and think you have them it's a little more tedious but in this I can simply just make a quick shape there it is stuck together and uh, each are both separate which is kind of cool look it's from the future it's like a star trek exercise machine all right so you can see kind of the cool stuff that you can do i'm going to go and delete this guy here um i wish i had an old german village that i uh used a long time ago i could show you the power of uh that lattice but you know we don't what we're going to do we're going to use this guy he'll be our guinea pig he shall be our German house of Germanness. So we're going to grab this guy here. I'm going to do Control D, duplicate him over. And before I do it, I'm going to do Control Z because I do want to grab this guy. I forgot that last part. And now we do Control D and safe, and everyone can sleep at night. So I grab this here, hit, keep my finger on the space bar. I'm going to go to the Create Deformers. I'm going to go Lattice. And this is freaking cool, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you how cool this guy can be. There's a couple of deformers you can use, but this guy's not too shabby. I dig him. So we can go in here now. I can raise this up. And if you want, you can actually get this guy a little more cartoony simply by um, stretching these parts out. Let me grab this here, stretch it out. And you don't necessarily have to do a point by point. I can go in here and I can make a brand new building. And notice that is a nice distribution for the whole piece. Pretty cool. Pretty nice, not too shabby. And uh, if I want to uh, make it a little bit more uh, nice drop off there, I can do so. And if you get what you want, we can go in here. And then you have to, the only the only thing you have to be careful about is if you want to keep it, just go in here and select, you have to make sure you select all these little pieces here. I'll get them, get them going. And we hit Control D to duplicate it. Keep my finger on the W key. Move it over, and there we go with that particular piece, and you can use that. And the old one, I can go in here and delete it, and it'll go back to its original shape here. Let me actually grab my lattice. I might have made two on accident. Um, so cool. You can see that we have a brand new shape based on this guy, and all the pieces kind of stay together. But do be careful. Make sure you know how much vertice splits you have. Notice I didn't quite have enough for the brick on the top, so we got spaced a little bit differently, but we did have enough for the other parts of our scene so that's using lattices that's one quick way to use it another one you can use and we'll just keep this guy we'll we we'll use him as a guinea pig make sure we deselect the road um there's one you could use called the wrap deformer which is way great and there's also a few others let me go ahead and hit my space bar 
Create the formulas. You can also use bend. There's flare. There's a few I didn't quite get into. Flare is great. Sign, squash. Now, squash, if you want this guy to look even more distinct and even maybe even a little bit cartoony, we can go in here and click on factor and we can go in here and look at that. Instant cartoon. Look at that. He's had too much cake. You can actually go in here and really tweak these out. So there we go. There's a new one. And you can go in here and even delete the history on this guy if you want it. So you can edit and delete by type all history. And you can keep it. Pretty cool. Or just grab the pieces, duplicate them, and drag them across. All right. So I, I hopefully that uh, gives you guys a better understanding of the power of modeling and what you can do. Remember to organize your scene. Try to add hyper detail. I'm going to make one more video and uh, for the week, and then we will move on to some more.